Back to the comedic principles. We're talking about the principles of cause and effect. Uh, and, you know, so basically every decision you make will have a uh, consequence. Okay. So when you're operating in mindfulness, you have to understand this. So like I was saying, when you guys didn't hear me that, you know, if I make a decision to take a shower when, you know, before I go to bed, uh, then the, the consequence is I won't stink. But if I make a decision to not take a shower, the consequence is I might stink. Just simply, sim something as simple as that, understanding that every single decision you make, no matter what it is, is going to have a consequence. And that's going to ripple out into space time. So when you're operating in mindfulness, you're operating in unconditional love, being of service to others, understanding that the decisions you make could not only affect yourself, but also influence and affect the people directly around you and that will then ripple out and one person can literally touch millions of lives so it's very important to understand that uh, when you're operating in mindfulness that you are literally operating in a way mentally that's going to have a positive outcome or positive consequences and then when you do that you have the ability to get information uh, that's high level information, it's esoteric knowledge, it's wisdom, that a lot of the things that you talk about on here, for example, Brother Rich, and then you, you can process that information through a filter, through a consciousness filter, because you're operating in the right mind state, and then you, you're able to process it, analyze it, and execute behind it, and incorporate solutions and things like that. But when you don't have that mindfulness in place, a lot of the information could get lost, could get misfiltered, can get utilized for the wrong purposes, uh, and it also, it can even overwhelm you in some cases. I want to touch on um, when we talk about remote viewing, um, there's this term that they use, remote influencing. And um, a lot of people use that with business. Say if you have a client and you want to understand the mind of a client or relate to the client, you could, I guess, there's this word that this brother used to use, um, this brother that I interviewed before on this channel called, uh, named Brother Polite. And he used to say, he used to tell me how he would send, you know how you send somebody an email on the computer. He was, he used to always tell me he would send etheric emails, etheric mm -hmm. mails to people. Instead of sending them um, digital emails, he would send them etheric emails or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's ways to, I guess, convince a client or there's ways to try to understand the client. Mm -hmm. And this thing works in a lot of different areas, many different areas of your life. So could you talk about remotely influencing somebody through yeah. remote. That's a smart brother because man, let me tell you something. That's something I use on a daily basis, mm. literally on a daily basis. I give you an example. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to really give y'all some of my secrets here. Uh, the reason why my social media accounts all blow up and become so big is yes, I do understand how social media work. Yes, I do understand how some of the algorithms work and I do post good, decent content. But there's a lot of people posting good and decent content every single day. And some people are still at four and 5,000 followers. And so what I found out early, uh, early on, I would say back and I would say maybe 2013 is when I started doing this. I realized that the energy inside of my body, the chi energy, the qigong energy, the energy that you can move through Reiki healing to heal with your hands and also the power that you have inside your body. We talked about it before that we have 37.5 trillion cells and each one has 0 0.07 volts of electricity. We have literally over 2.5 or 2.6 trillion volts of power inside of our human body. And that's just chi spiritual energy that's built up inside of us. So every time that I'm online making a post onto social media, before I actually click the send button, I literally summon some of that, what I call chi energy, and I send it into my finger. And when I post, make that post, when I push that send button, I send the chi energy with the data into mm -hmm. the post. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you may want to call it quasi or pseudo, or whatever people want to call it. I don't care. What I feel is that it works mm -hmm. because my accounts, I have 140 social media accounts, and some accounts, people have no idea who Forbidden Knowledge is, no idea it's Billy Carson, and the same technique seems to work on every single account. People are following my accounts who don't even know I own these other accounts in various different topics all over the internet, between Facebook and Facebook groups and pages and Twitter 
and, and Instagram accounts, just the, the amount of accounts is just numerous. And um, it seems to work. It really does seem to work. And so I analyzed people that are posting just the same amount of quality, starting around the same exact time I did, posting about the same amount of times per day, and I don't see the same result. Uh, and this, when I say blind study, I mean, I'm talking about accounts that people don't even know it's me behind the button. So I really feel like that, that sending that remote energy into, uh, re remote influencing energy into the actual device, I feel that it works. And the reason why is because we talk scientifically that you can um, send energy out of your body and we do it every single moment that we're alive because every thought becomes a light wave that leaves your skull. The same thing as there's this auric field around us and in that field is some of the, uh, is some of the electromagnetic energy coming out of our hearts, our heart uh, you know, chakra and everything else. And so when we direct that into the device, it literally now can, because they're compatible, we already know that biology and technology are fully compatible because technology, man-made technology, is just a slightly altered modification of the, of the biological technology that we have because as above, so below. That will never change. So it's completely compatible. That's why DNA can store digital bits of information from a computer. It's not amazing to me because why? Because DNA is, 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 is uh, you know, it's software and hardware. So... It's, it's software inside of hardware. So it's the same thing as a computer. So when we send that energy directed in, in there, it's going to have a direct effect. It's gonna synchronize with that frequency of the phone. It's gonna send it up that microwave signal to the local uh, cell phone tower, up into space to a satellite. It's gonna bounce down to the region wherever that person is that's looking at it. And that energy is literally piggybacking. So when you have a cell phone, you have an, a microwave frequency that's sending and receiving from this phone every millisecond. And when that energy goes in, it piggybacks, it rides that wave up to the tower, up to the satellite, back down to the region where that person is. And then when it does that, when they open that device and they, they're looking at that information, that photonic energy from the screen bounces into their retina. The energy has now been absorbed by their body and is now being converted into uh, you know, discernment as to what's going on. The energy literally had a direct effect and it draw them, drew them to that information. In my personal opinion, that's how it works. And I've been doing it that way. And to me, I'm not going to change it. I really feel like it really does work. Remote influencing is a huge thing. Man, so you're going to be covering, um, you know, what you just talked about during the um, remote workshop, the remote viewing workshop? I've got about five. It's so amazing that you brought this up, man. I mean, it's, yeah. We tuned <laughs> in, like, man. We tuned in. We tuned, we tuned in. in, man. I have like five different uh, things for people to practice on how to influence situations with only using their energy and conscious thought. Uh, you know, so, you know, this is amazing. That's actually part of the actual workshop. So it's going to be, man, people are going to be blown away by the power they're going to realize how they can unleash their power on the world in a positive way and get the matrix to bend to their will. That's really what this is all about. Hey, man, I'm glad you when you speak about this, you're not just talking. You're extremely successful at business. I mean, you got a lot of million dollar businesses going on right now, my brother. And I, you, you I'm glad you've given us the game. You know, some people, they know the game and they hold on. They stingy with the game. Yeah, man. You know, they real stingy <laughs> with the game. So. Thanks for giving us the game on how to reach that, a, a different way to reach that level of success. That was deep what you just said about how before you send that post, you send in all your chi energy within before you, through your finger, before you hit that post. That's some real right. stuff, my brother. Yeah, that's, that's real, real, man. Stuff. That is so real. And, uh, you know, and the thing about it is a lot of people, when they find a little niche or a way to become successful in certain things, they feel like they have to hide it because in their mind, it's like, if everybody finds out, man, how am I going to, how am I going to maintain my market share or my market value? Not realizing there's enough for everybody. The, mm. You know, the, the mindset that we have when we think like that is the mindset of the elites that try to control this planet through dark means because they feel like if we don't keep this power and control, if we don't keep suppressing technology and suppressing cures and, keeping them sick and unhealthy. And if we don't keep them dumbed down, eventually they'll become too smart and then we'll lose all of our power. See, that's, that's bad thinking, that's dumb thinking. You have to understand that 
the people in power, if they really were smart, they'd see that by making this a place of light and excellence and abundance, that they would flourish even 20 time fold than what they are right now. And mm -hmm. they would be living a 10 time or 20 fold better life than what they are right now. Uh, and everybody else on the planet would as well. They have the wrong mindset. I feel like give this information out, share this information, because now, you know, you're doing something what they call, you know, in, in Hebrew, they call it the mitzvah. You're doing a good deed and you're actually putting out positive energy. And that positive energy is going to recycle back around if you believe in karmic energy. And so I'm always putting out these karmic energies that are going to go out and come back and circle back. And in some way, shape or form, when I, I don't even know when it's going to happen, something is coming to help me continue on my path and, you know, keep me fulfilling my, my path to abundance. Uh, you know, and uh, that's what it's all about. And that's why I wrote the book, Woke Doesn't Mean Broke, which is on pre-order right now. And it's uh, 640 pages of incredible content. That, that book is going to create millionaires and maybe even billionaires. Mm. When is that book dropping? The book is on pre-order now and it's actually in print. So the first batch of orders from this only been on pre-order for one week on ForbiddenKnowledge.com. Uh, of course, if you go there, use coupon code BLACKMAGIC363. If you do get the book on pre-order on my website, use BLACKMAGIC363 uh, coupon code. But the book is literally um, uh, been out in pre-order for a week, and it's actually going to be uh, shipping within a few days. And then uh, it's already loaded up on Amazon, but right now it still says unavailable until Amazon gets the first few cases of, of the book. 600 pages of incredible content. I got reviews in there from Waka Flocka Flame, who's a very astute businessman. A lot of people don't know that. Well, he's sharp. I mean, he, he's sharp. Yeah, he's sharp. He's sharp, man. He's sharp. I mean, the brother got $4 million in his stock trading account that he plays it on a daily basis. You know, a lot of real estate properties, a lot of other investments that he does. Smart businessman. He read the book and went crazy. I sent him a pre-edited, uh, unedited uh, uh, digital version before the book was released. Uh, Waka Flocka Flame, Mia X, uh, you know, a female rapper, of course, you know, with Master P uh, and now also an author and has her own cooking show. Uh, great review there. Dr. Tara Swart, my professor from MIT. Uh, Robert Grant, Harvard mathematics professor. Uh, Matthew LaCroix uh, did a, gave me a phenomenal review. He's an expert in ancient civilizations. I mean, just the, the list of reviews that I got are just off the charts. Donnie Arcade, Billboard music artist. Cruise, Billboard Music Arts, a lot of great um, reviews that I got, which are going to be inside the book. Uh, even more famous people are in there. So uh, everybody's like, wow, this is this book is amazing. The amount of information that's in here and the way that it's laid out, I'm literally giving the game to you step by step. It's the, it's the lowest investment you're ever going to make into helping yourself go combine spirituality and learning how to maneuver the financial matrix all at once. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, shit. I mean, it, it don't, it, that, that's what it's all about. It's all about being financially abundant. There's a brother named 19 Keys. He, I think he calls it rich in righteousness, I think. But um, to be able to, to be financially abundant and not sacrifice your integrity, is, it's a beautiful thing. And sometimes we think we have to make a choice. We think we have to be conscious or, or in broke, or we think we have to be rich in a scumbag. Right. So it's good to know that, you know, this is a different paradigm and uh, times have changed, you know, you uh, especially because of the Internet, especially because of all the information and knowledge that's readily available. So mm -hmm. books like that and workshops like that where you can remote view and remote influence. Uh, we got the whole world right here that, that we can talk to. So with you saying that, you know, you have millions of followers on Instagram, you're using these spiritual techniques. That's awesome, bro. And I, yeah. like I said, I can't commend you enough on that, brother. Just combining the two worlds and, yeah. and fusing them together and being successful. Let me talk to you about, um, we talked about remote influencing in the business world. And this is all part of the workshop. And for some reason, um, shout out to the sister sci-fi, one of the mods. When the sister shares the link, it's not working. I'm going to share right now. I don't know why. But if you want more information on the workshop, uh, the brother Billy Carson is putting together, which this is the uh, ev the next evolution in mind power. We really going to go to the next phase in this, and this is going to be this is going to be something that we do on an everyday basis in the near future. 
So um, don't miss the boat. Don't get left behind in the in the in the um, in, in the in the circus show that's going on with politics or politics. Yeah. Tap in, go with this side. So I just shared the link. But Billy Carson, we talked about remote influencing in the business world. What about remote healing? I remember about probably about 13 years ago, a brother had called me on the phone. And uh, he was telling me about remote healing and if he was able to tune into my frequency, mm -hmm. but not just me, but anybody's frequency, he could heal that person. So mm -hmm. is this something you're going to talk about in the workshop and just explain a little bit? Well, I was going to talk about Edgar Casey in the workshop because he's a phenomenal and one of the most recent, well-known and well-documented remote viewers. Uh, there's actually a museum to this man in this man's name. Uh, he died in more recent times, so we can go back instead of saying, "Oh, this ancient, this and ancient that." Well, how about you know, let's talk about as recent as 1970s. Uh, and he had the capability; people would line up for miles to come see him. He was known as the Sleeping Prophet, and they would come to him, and he would remote view where he would go into the semi-awake, semi-dream, dream, uh, dream state, like we, I'm going to teach you how to do. And he would uh, diagnose the person's illness or sicknesses. And he would go into the remote viewing mindset where he would send his mind out to find the cure for what they have. And this man was right virtually 100% of the time. It was just absolutely amazing. This would be on CNN every five seconds instead of the poly tricks and all this other garbage, what this, what this man was able to accomplish in such a short period of time. Uh, and so with that, he was able to, oh, because all information already exists in the Akashic record. And so he was able to tune into the frequency and ask the universe for the answer to the problem. And then he would get that answer. Now that's one way of healing is by providing a solution. Another way of healing somebody is by actually channeling conscious energy into that person. So you can actually, uh, it doesn't matter where they are. They don't even have to be in front of you. They could be on the other side of the planet. But if you can find a way to get in tune with their consciousness, and then you're able to tap into, you set the body as a target, you set their illness as a target, and then you remote view that illness, you can come back with some data that you can actually scribble down and write down on a piece of paper. And from there, you can diagnose or potentially diagnose what the problem might be. And then from there, the point is, how do you direct energy? So you direct your positive, and everybody, everybody on the planet can do this. You direct positive healing energy towards that specific thing towards that uh, specific ailment that that person may have and because if they but they, the trick is the person that's receiving that remote energy has to be totally willing to accept the healing as well they have to be in collusion if they're not in collusion it will it will not work and there's actually a video i'm going to show where this is actually happening happening uh where energy Remote, where conscious remote energy is being sent into a human body to mm. cure somebody. And that's going to be, and you're going to see it live on video. You're going to see the tumor disappearing live on sonogram in the remote viewing class. Mm. Man, listen, I'm, I'm excited, family. Once again, let me share the link. I'm going to keep posting the link for anybody who doesn't have it. I'm going to keep posting the link. Listen, this is what it's all about, family. Like I said, the only way out is within. And uh, this is something, like I said, in my personal, I'm not just a part of it, just to be a part of it and to um, whatever. I'm actually very interested in this stuff and, and, and you know, studying it myself at the time to try to, uh, by the time the conference comes, the workshop comes around, I want to be totally ready and prepared. Um, let me talk to you about, you know, you, you talked about meditating. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in religion, the Muslims pray facing the East. So when we meditate, are we supposed to be facing in a certain direction while we meditate that to have optimal results? You know, um, it may offend somebody, but I don't believe that it matters if you're facing east or not. I hope it doesn't offend anybody, but uh, I've been facing in all different directions, up, down, side by side. I've been meditating in planes for years. Mm -hmm. And I think the effects of the meditation have always been positive and phenomenal for me. Uh, my longest meditation has been 7.5 hours or just under 7.5 hours. And somebody said, well, how can you do that? Well, I was on a flight for 33 hours <laughs> going to Asia. And so you got a lot of time. So I, I decided to see how long I can, I can go in a meditation. Prior to that, I had only did four hours. 
Uh, you know, so I think that, and I don't know what direction the plane is flying, if it's going east or west or whatever, it's going to Asia. I don't know what direction I'm sitting in at that moment. But so I don't really worry about the directions as much because I really feel that right now our solar system is on alignment with the galactic equator. Mm -hmm. So you have this giant disc, which is called the galaxy, and it's very thick. It's actually light year, or maybe almost a light year thick. So what happens is, even though you have this giant disk, our solar system doesn't just go straight around. It actually undulates up and down as it moves around the galactic equator over so many thousands of years. But every 26 or 27,000 years, it actually undulates into a position where it's dead center on the equatorial line to the supermassive black hole that's in the center of our galaxy. And that supermassive black hole is emitting high streaming particles, not only of radiation, but also of cosmic rays and cosmic energy, which is happening right now. So because we're lined up with that galactic equator right now, those cosmic rays are directly affecting our DNA. And so we're in a position right now where anything we do to enhance ourselves is going to be, uh, you know, fourfold, fivefold because of this cosmic energy because coming from that supermassive black hole. Stephen Hawking, the famous uh, theoretical physicist, discovered that these black holes are emitting uh, what, he, what he labeled now as Hawking's radiation, it became now a scientific term taught in colleges and physics classes and astrophysics, Hawking's radiation. This is being emitted from these black holes on a consistent stream basis until the black hole actually evaporates. So black holes don't persist forever. They're not eternal. They do evaporate because of the Hawking's radiation. But we're absorbing those rays and those um, and those uh, you know that that energy that's coming from that black hole that's directly affecting and changing and altering our DNA on a moment by moment basis. So I think with that combined with meditation, no matter what direction you're facing, and you're going to have a positive result. Well, let me ask you this: Why is it that um, when we see like when we see the movies or we see um, shows or documentaries, or if you ever seen somebody getting possessed, like when you meditate, you got your eyes closed. When you see somebody getting possessed, their eyes are rolling in the back of their head and that's scary to people. Yeah. They're like, oh shit, their eyes is rolling in the back of the head. What is that about? Why the hell does the eyes always roll to the back of the head when someone, what's going on up here? Where your eyes is like, what's going on up there? Is there something up there that I need to be watching? <laughs> I don't what's know. Going? You know, it's interesting that that became a symbol of possession or or your or uh, losing your mind, that kind of eye rolling thing. It may just be something that um, we feel is a natural way that we can perceive if this was to happen to us, that's what, we, that's what would happen to the human body. I actually think it's most likely not the case that if there's an entity that's sophisticated enough to hijack the avatar body, I don't think they're going to make your eyes roll back. I don't think a lot of times I don't think people even know they've been hijacked. It's almost like, uh, you know, I can hack into your car. Well, not me because I don't have the technology, but the government or other people on the streets, they know how to, they have this hacking technology where they can hack into your car. Your car thinks it's just driving down the road and all of a sudden the car's it's turning off or it's turning corners and all this kind of, it's crashing, uh, you know, so uh, people can hijack a car. They can hijack your, your computer. They can be hacked into and we can hijack. The computer thinks everything's working normally. It doesn't realize it's been hijacked. The same thing with the avatar body. And the reason I'm giving these technological examples is because as above, so below, man-made technology is just a lower version of what we already are in the avatar. Uh, so it's com totally compatible. So a human body can be hijacked, and that's already been proven with MK Ultra, which is now an, a, a verified, uh, you know, CIA program or project that did occur, where they hijacked human beings' uh, consciousness and got them to do all kind of ridiculously crazy things, like blow up buildings and everything else. So mm -hmm. it's it's possible, you know. Uh, and so it's weird, but you know, the rolling of the eyes. I don't think that's going to happen. I think people are going to look just like they normally look but somebody's just going to flip the switch and change the way your electromagnetic waves operate. And they're going to send in their, their So we're receiving a stream of consciousness on, on a consistent basis because the mind doesn't create consciousness. It downloads it. What they do is they find a way to tap into that Schumann resonance frequency, and then they just flip it. And then, uh, then, then they send in their own data or they piggyback the stream coming in 
and then you hear voices in your head and you hear, tell, you hear yourself telling yourself to do things and you think it's you or some other entity, but in actuality, you've been hijacked. Wow, Inter interesting, man, very interesting. Wow, uh, about how much more time we got left? You got uh, available, Billy, because I know- uh, you have I gotta run to the airport and grab somebody, but I got about maybe, I would say 10 minutes. Okay, so we got about, like I said, family, this is a short show tonight. Uh, but we will be back early next week. We're just going to keep, we're going to, every week, we're going to be building with y'all leading up until this remote viewing workshop. December 5th is going down, family. These are very, very, very important times we live in. Um, you could tell because distractions are at an all-time high on the media and on television and on your phone. We're glued to the screen. We have the, the TV screen, the computer screen, but we also have the quantum screen within our minds that we could tap into. And that's the screen we should be looking at the most. Mm -hmm. And that's why this year I have focused so much on um, internal practices, whether it's the Kundalini meditation with Blue Pill, whether it was the I Magi Nation workshop earlier this year with, with uh, Billy Carson, and now it's the remote viewing workshop. But this is what I'm about, family. This is what I'm about. So this is what uh, I'm gonna be spreading out to the public and I think this is a vital importance, man. So I just definitely appreciate your time, my brother, Billy Carson. Um, you know what I think will help people a lot is if, you know, with the, the senses are so addicting because we could feel, we could taste, we could touch, we could smell, we could hear. I think when we when some people meditate, if, if they could somehow use those senses during meditation, it would be it would be on and popping, Billy. If I could smell and I could hear and I could touch and I could feel, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. oh man, I would want to meditate all day. Yeah. But because we don't know how to utilize the senses internally, we think it's boring. So a person, if if you tell them to meditate for five minutes, they they act like it's an hour. They're like, oh shit, five minutes. <laughs> Maybe I got something else to do. But yeah. Are you going to touch on that? Because I think that is of utmost importance. During the workshop, will you touch on how to use your senses internally? That's actually part of the remote viewing. That's part Excellent. of the training. Yes. See, so, okay, so I'll give you an example. Senses are really incredible because it's whatever data that your sensory perception can collect. And it also depends on how the body is wired. So, for example, I have synesthesia, so my audio and visual cortex are merged. So I process sounds and colors differently than most people. You know, so when I hear noises and sound or sounds, I see colors and numbers in my eyes. That's why I wear shades a lot. A lot of people don't know that. I wear shades all the time because it dulls out some of the input. I even drive with shades on from time to time, just depending on how much input. And if I see a lot of bright colors on my screen on social media, I have to slow down and stop because all those colors moving fast like that mm -hmm. give me a tingling sensation in my chest. So everybody experiences information differently. And with that being said, in remote viewing, what happens is I just showed you a, in a way where my brain processes moving colors, moving bright colors as a feeling. I can feel colors mm. and I can see sounds. In remote viewing, you're going to learn that when you send your mind out, you're going to be able to come back and you have to. There's no you will, but you have to come back. This is part of the training. You got to write down the smell. You got to write down mm. the, 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 mm. the, the, what you hear. All those senses that you normally would use by physically uh, inter interacting with your third dimensional world around you, you're going to now do only with the consciousness. Okay. And you got to write this information down. Like when I found my ex wife's wedding ring, it was behind a dresser and I came back with damp. I came back with smells like damp wood. You know, I came back with cold or cool. These were my sensory perception, all from remote viewing. And it was right in the exact, exact spot where my mind found it. So uh, this is what we're going to do. We're going to, and you know, when people say like, man, you got so many businesses, how do you, you know, because a lot of people try businesses and fail, 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 fail. It's not, it's not easy to find a business and be successful at it. But I start up so many companies and virtually almost every single one just takes off. But they don't realize that I'm remote viewing these businesses before I do them. I'm not just jumping into business and wasting my energy and spinning my wheels for two and three years and finding I lost everything and I got to start from scratch again. I'm not doing that, man. Right, right, right. You right. know, I'm going in with power. I'm going in with confidence because I'm I'm looking to see. I don't know the exact dates in the future because with remote viewing, you can't find a specific date, but you can 
create target future uh, um, ripples. And so you can see things happening and then you can see smaller things happening up until that big ripple. So you can get an idea when you see this happening and that happened, we're getting close to that. And because of that, I can then see, oh, I can move in this way. Well, what if I move in this way? Oh, that failed. Let me move in this way. Okay, oh, that's a good result. So now that's what I'm using. I'm using, utilizing the remote viewing. And that's why, you know, 15 companies later, everything is on and popping and doing phenomenal. Uh, and I can keep it spent. I mean, there's so many things I can do, but I just can't do them all because I'm only one person and I can only build so many teams. Uh, but I'm telling you, uh, I'm utilize, utilizing this thing to head to the Billy Club. And you know what the Billy Club is. <laughs> it's the Billionaire Club. Now, uh, Billionaire, woo! Okay. Hey, that's where it's headed. So, you know, um, I, I, the proof is in the pudding. I've utilized this stuff. I've worked it. I've become successful. I've got documented proof. I've got the businesses. i got the bank statements. i got whatever people need to see. So it's not like I'm just talking off the top of my head, you know. This is this is coming from somebody that's already done it, been there and done it. So it's not like a mystery. And so you're learning from somebody who's already experienced and utilizing these techniques in real life. To, uh, you know, on a real life basis, on a daily basis. Uh, and I think that people need to understand also that uh, what my goals of abundance are may not be your goals of abundance, and that's okay. Rolling, walking in abundance doesn't mean you have to have a billion dollars in your bank account, but it does mean that every all your needs will be met, you know, and that's important to understand. And you can utilize remote viewing to make these things or help bend the matrix, I should say, to your will so that as you're walking through this third dimensional electromagnetic field that we're operating in, things are falling towards you. Things are bending to your will and falling towards you to, to, to the best of your uh, benefit, to help you out, to help your family out. And you're foreseeing things before they happen so that you know what decisions to make. You know, it's really incredible stuff, man. This, is, this class is going to build some people. It's going to create uh, some people's wealth. It's going to create take people from a very maybe a, a poor state and take them to a much better state because they're going to be able to have better discernment on what's coming. Yo, you know how um, in remote viewing, one of the words they use a lot is um, have a target, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to write on my visualiz visualization board, Billy Club. That's going to be my target. So I want to remote view to the frequency of billionaires, man. I want to, yeah. I'm gonna tap in, but this some this real shit, Billy man. I'm telling you, and 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 I see how you operate, and and I talk to you off camera, and I see how you move, and I'm like, yo, how does this brother? I talk to you all, off camera on the phone. I'm yeah. like, yo, Billy, how you do this? Because I'm trying to learn. Right, I'm right. not hating. I'm trying to learn. I'm like, yo, Billy, tell me, tell me some secrets, man. Right. So <laughs> yeah, man. I, I yo, this is gonna be dope. This is gonna be yeah. awesome. Yo, I'm excited. I can't wait, my brother. Uh, one last question. This is a little bit off topic. Like I said, family, this is just a short show tonight. Uh, my brother has uh, things he has to get a, a do tonight, but we will be back next week. But in the meantime, let me share this link again. I hope y'all enjoying yourselves in the chat room. Uh, I'm sure y'all are. This is like a great conversation, man. A great uh, spiritual conversation we're having tonight about the next evolution in mind power that's taking place that either you are Either you are involved in the distractions, politics, because we're getting a huge upgrade. You know how every time we got we got Mac computers, right? And you get the up, you get the update, the Mac OS or Mac Job or you know all them updates we get. Mac gives out. So we're we're our biological machine is getting a huge update right now. Right. And but before you up before you get the update, you got to click download. So when you are part of this show, this workshop, you you click and download. Everybody else just got the update sitting on their screen and they're never clicking download. And they could update their biological avatar, but they just won't because they're looking at some other shit. So yeah. what we're telling you is to click on that update and, and, and update your, your avatar, update your consciousness. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's what this is all about. If we're going to use analogies and we're going to use technology to understand what's going on right now, we got a huge update from the universe, but we just got to click on it. And how we click on it is going within. That's and right. this is what the workshops is all about. Even if you don't join the workshop, shit, go within. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just go within, do what you got to do. But just like what, when you want to learn how to drive, you got an instructor. Just like uh, um, when you learn how to ride a bike, sometimes somebody teach. Whenever you want to learn how to do something, 
you get a mentor, you get an instructor, you get a teacher. It's the same thing with this. Mm -hmm. You know, this brother was taught by um, one of the best. This brother has been doing it for years. So he's here to pass down the game to us. We always say, yo, the people who got the bread or the people who got this don't teach us. This brother's here to teach us. He's yeah. not here to keep it and hoard it to himself. So I'm not gonna go out there and, 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 and learn how to swim on my own. I might get a slim swimming instructor. I don't know. There's all types of instructors out there. If I wanna practice something, I might get somebody to help me and that's what this brother's here for. So I appreciate everybody for tuning in, everybody for being interested. This show, this is what it's all about. I'm excited as you can see. This is what I'm into. This is what I tap into, tune into. One last question, Billy Carson, before you get out of here, he'll, he will be back early next week. Yeah. My brother, we talk about time is an illusion. We talk about time is not linear. Um, and we talk about the earth plane and reincarnation. And we talk about though, if you got one of the best selling books on Amazon, mm -hmm. is it possible say, when you make your transition, my brother, is it possible, say you make your transition in 2060, yeah. Billy Carson makes his transition at 2060. Uh, your spirit leaves this, this matrix in 2060. Is it possible when you come back here, instead of coming back here in the future, you come back here in 1010 BC? Can you incarnate in the past? Because it's, it's all, it's all, it's all, it's, it's not linear. So can you incarnate in the past instead of incarnating in the future? A, that is a great question. That's a phenomenal question. Nobody ever asked me that question before, man. And I've been asked a lot of questions, but that's something that I actually thought about a long time ago. Like, because what I see is that there's, well, obviously scientifically now we believe there in theoretical physics that time uh, is an illusion, number one. Number two, above the third dimension, the past, present, and future exist at the same exact time. And just like in the movie Interstellar, if anybody saw that, uh, when he got caught up in the Tesseract, which is the fourth dimensional cube, he was able to see his daughter in the past, present, and future. Uh, she was inside of the house. But in each room, she was in the house. She was different ages, okay? And he was trying to communicate with her through vibration and frequency to let her know that he was there. So when you transition out of this avatar body and the energy is released from this temporal, temporal meaning time encased prison, this temporary temporary prison, but in a temporal, temporal uh, uh, realm, then your frequency is available at a higher dimension to travel backwards in time, to travel forwards in time, and to even phase shift out of this entire universe into another universe. You can go into the multiverse. You might transition into another universe. As a matter of fact, I believe that time travel uh, from the third dimension, if you go back in time, you don't go back in time on your same timeline. That's how come you can kill your grandfather and still have went back in time to do it. Because when you go back in time, you phase shift out of this universe into another one. And you go back in time in a, in a different reality. Uh, mm -hmm. So I believe that all those things are possible when you shed this avatar body and you, be, you go back to your, you know, go back to the source. You can actually maneuver around. You may not even come back. And a lot of things people think I'm coming back to earth. Maybe not. You could be going coming back anywhere in the entire universe or into another universe. You could be coming back as not as a black man. You could be coming back as an Asian man. You could be coming back at any race. You could be coming back any gender. Mm. You can't control that either in some cases, unless you do with the, the teachings of Thoth, which I have in my book, where he consciously incarnates at will in and in and on the plane he desires. So he trained he he not only does he consciously incarnate at will. But he also controls the dimension he comes back in. So um, that's a technique that you have to learn. It takes many years. That's, that's my ultimate goal is to consciously incarnate at will. But the people that are just incarnating over and over and over again, unconsciously, they can come back. Some of these people that may have been women or men before. You may have been different races before. You may have been on different planets. Uh, hey, you know, so it's really interesting. Hey, hey, Billy, if you incarnated back here, would you want to retain your memory? Or do you think it... Do you think it's more fun, the fact that you forget everything so you could experience it new again? Or would you want to uh, retain your memory and let's say uh, just remember, you, you get what I'm saying? Remember who you yeah. were in the past. I want to retain the memory like Thoth did because he retained all of his memories on every, uh, in every incarnation. And because of that, he became the ultimate knowledge you know, person in the, on probably dumb damn in the galaxy. 
uh, because he had saved up so much information and, and transferred that information from Avatar Body to Avatar Body, he built up this humongous library in his head. He was able to go from planet to planet and teach people on any planet anything he need, they needed to learn. He was able to teach them, give them languages, give them whatever. He had accumulated so much wisdom and knowledge. And I think to me, that would be more exciting than forgetting all the time. We, we know real quick, we know this is an avatar. We know we are not the, 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 the human body. This is a vessel. This is a machine. This is what we are using to navigate the space time reality. And one word that using the English language, what's the one word you, you would use to describe who you really are, my brother? The essence of you. What's one word you would use? Divine light. Divine light. Yeah. Uh, divine life. And with that being said, listen, family, once again, it's going down the remote viewing workshop. Yo, this was such an amazing show. I'm proud to be presenting this to y'all. December 5th is going down. The brother Billy Carson, yo, the brother, the brother, the brother's going to be giving out game that day. And if you want to learn how to use the spirit world and the material world, because it's really the same thing, but we've been taught it's separate, but mm. spirit and material is really the same thing. It's just one is a crystallized version of the other. Uh, this brother, this brother got the game. So he's going to be giving out the game on remote viewing, remote influencing uh, um, for business, personal reasons, anything you could creativity, anything you could think of in your life is going down December 5th. I put the link a thousand times in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat. So make sure you participate. It's the best investment you can make. Everybody's buying things for Christmas and the holidays. This is an investment, not just in your future on this plane, but in, in your afterlife as well. You know what I'm saying? This is a practice session for what you're going to have to do in the afterlife when you don't have this body. One day you're not going to have this body. And you're going to, you're going to want to know how to maneuver. Pr start practicing here in this realm. So when you don't have this body no more, you, you, you are master at this shit. And you ain't got to come back here to try to practice it all over again. So um, I want to thank my brother, Billy Carson. Like I said, we're going to be back next week. My brother, uh, leave your contact info, whatever you want to leave the people before we get out of here. Uh, ForbiddenKnowledge.com with the number four. You can go there. My book, Woke Doesn't Mean Broke, is on pre-order, shipping in a few days. And it's a uh, uh, coupon code BLACKMAGIC363. The book is 600 pages of in-depth knowledge and wisdom on how to combine spirituality with navigating the financial matrix and the reviews so far have been off the chain, off the chain reviews. The biggest two reviews I got from Dr. Tara Swatter, MIT, and um, uh, uh, Robert Grant, uh, Harvard uh, mathematics professor, just was blown away. So, and their reviews will be in the book as well. Uh, and so I think you're gonna love it. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, uh, if you like it, you know, just share it and the holiday season's coming up. Don't forget to use Black Magic 363 on the coupon code. Indeed. Real, another real quick question. You know, I'm gonna save that one. I'm gonna save that one for the next show. Cause right. I know you gotta go brother, but I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just so exciting to me, my brother. Yeah. I'm just yeah, so excited. On. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I can keep going on. And that's how you know somebody loves what they're doing and they're not just doing it just to do it. I actually love what I'm doing, but I gotta respect, you gotta go, my brother, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. With that being said, family, this is Brother Rich, Billy Costa and Black Magic Forbidden Knowledge. We're getting out of here. We're going to see you next week, family. But most importantly, December 5th is the workshop. We're mm -hmm. getting closer, family. Don't cheat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Sign up. The link is in the, um, the chat room, and I'm going to have it in the description after I upload this. We're getting out of here, family. Peace. All right.